Planescape Torment, hello! Now, I've now lost track of what I'm supposed to be doing, so let's open the old journal and let's have a little look. Let's just catch up generally, because there isn't too much. Um, okay, so yes, I woke up in the mortuary, I know that. Um, I need to find Farod and my journal, I know that. Then we met Dahl, then we found out that Farod delivered my corpse here in a cart. Dahl told me that Farod will be found in the hive, which is outside the mortuary, and that I shouldn't go looking for him. I found out that I had companions that travelled with me, a little D&D &D party. Generally speaking, they all die, and I end up here again with them. But I'm the one that wakes up and they don't. The only one I've got a real lead on is a woman who journeyed with me, who is interred in the memorial hall on the first floor of the mortuary. So we'll look for her later on. She's down, but we're currently up and we're going to just do all the up things and then we're going to go down. Dahl has been keeping my return visits to the mortuary a secret from the rest of the dustmen. Since he's the scribe in the receiving room, he is one of the only ones who sees my body when it arrives here. So for whatever reason, he's decided not to tell any other dustmen that there's a return visitor who keeps, you know, coming back to life. Which does make me wonder how I got out of the mortuary every previous time, because this time, you know, I'm going around talking to Dusties, so you'd think someone would remember me from a previous time and go, oh, it's you again, what are you doing here? I thought you were here just the other day and then left. But they don't, which makes me wonder if I've been leaving in a more interesting way in previous occasions. I met the tiefling Ivane, the tiefling being someone who's half human, half demon, and yes, that would imply, wouldn't it, that there are demons around the place. Then I met the guy disguised as a zombie, don't know why he's doing that, and then he told me that downstairs in the northwest room there is a portal, and I need a crooked finger bone, which I've got now, and that'll take me to a secret crypt where Vaxis says I can rest. Now I might find more of my old companions in that crypt, mightn't I? Um, we don't know where any of them are other than the woman. So we've got two rooms now that we want to visit on the first floor. The memorial room, where I'll find whoever that woman was, and then the northwest room. We don't know what kind of room that is, but it's got a portal in it if I take a crooked finger bone in there. So my remaining quests are, oh, find Farad and find the missing journal, right. So I basically haven't got anything Done. to do here. All right. uh, you know, at least that is important enough to go on my list of uh, assigned quests. All right. However, I do have some stuff to explore downstairs. So before I do that, let's just make sure we've covered everywhere upstairs. Uh, and make sure there isn't any more upstairs than this. I suppose I'm not sure what's in there, so let's I'm gone. go that way. Done. Can't go through there, can I? No. Okay, so down here then. We find ourselves another staircase. Uh, I feel as if I've been in here, I'm but gone. Uh, let's just check the shelves anyway. All uh, right. Move on. Uh, a hammer. Probably don't need a hammer, do I? Let's try it and find out. What can you do with a hammer? Crushing. Have I got... Are these crushing? Yeah, they're crushing. Uh, and I'm, I've got 1 to 6, speed 4, weight 3. 1 to 6, speed 4, weight 3. Whoops. 1 to 6, speed 6. Weight 6. Okay, so faster but heavier, which implies that I can't carry many of them. Um, I think that must be what it is, because it obviously doesn't slow me down. You know, it speeds me up, which I suppose it might do in the case of a hammer. You know, as you as you hammer, the weight of it makes it fall, but then you have to bring it up again. I suppose what you could do is you could use the momentum and just sort of windmill your arm round. Ow! Ah! This is a heavy work hammer. It has a long handle and a metal head that looks like it could shape steel and crush skulls with ease. All right, proficiency hammers. Ah, and the other ones... Oh, I have to go over here for the other ones. Say proficiency clubs. So that's actually a different proficiency. Um, well, is either of these better than the other one? I think they're exactly the same, aren't they? Huh. Well, I'm, I'm really terribly sorry, but I might have to get rid of the arm because the iron pry bar is really useful, you know, for braying things. Hang on, can I put that in a... No. Hmm... So I've got, one of these is redundant, and it's basically this one, because this one serves a second purpose. Problem is, this one's funny! I'm going to keep that there for now, I'm going to keep my hammer, and then, you know, I'll, I'll probably swap for the hammer once I've used my arm, but I want to use it at least once and see what it looks like. Uh, nothing Done. there. Oh, that is the one. Okay. Oh, alright! So now we get some, oh, now we get to do some interesting stuff. We're going to go downstairs, and we're going to look at a fallen comrade and a crypt. Fan. Fantastic. Let's go and have a look. Oh, never mind that. A fallen comrade and a portal. Yeah, this is going to be good. I'm gone. Uh, if I can All find right. the way down. Uh-oh. I know I'm sorry. 
I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Ah, and we're safe. So where are we now? We're not on the first floor, we're on the second floor. How do we get further down than this? Uh, oh, is that... Have I not been there? Is that a blank space? I think it is. Okay, well there might be some steps in there then. I feel like I've seen them. They're next to another steps. Aren't they? At different steps. Oh, there! There we go. That's what I was thinking of. Wait, though. No. Right. I haven't been here, apparently. No, look at that. Fog of war. Okay. Done. Oh, there's a room still downstairs to deal with. All right. Bloodstains, rust, and other remains cover the surface of this metal slab. Yes, we've seen that. That's just the same description as any of the other big ones. There was a zombie that went up there, so I'll have a look. Oh, there was a pile of things on the floor as well. Let me just open this. Let's just get everything sort of sorted out. There follows a dramatic reading of the next bit, because originally this bit was really boring. Okay, so this leads where? Oh, is this the first room? Is this where I... Yes, that's where I started out, isn't it? All right. Okay, so there's a little pile of things on the floor there. What's that? It's unusual you just find things on the floor. They're usually in the possession of something or someone. Or on a shelf or something. Or in a... shelf or something. Now, there was a zombie that went up here. But I can't find him now! Check, there's nothing else around here. Because I'm used to modern games, I feel like I want to press Alt and reveal all the clickable items. But I can't! Here he is. Hello. Anything interesting about you? The especially ghastly looking female corpse is missing its ears, nose and lips. Ugh. In order to sew her jaw closed, whoever prepared her had to draw the skin especially tight around her mouth. You can still see a line of crooked yellow teeth through the open slit that remains. The number 891 has been carved into the flesh of her brow. Ugh. I'm gonna... My policy is to chat up at each and every single zombie in case it increases some kind of inappropriately sexually pestering zombies stat that helps me out somehow later. Done. And here we go. Wait, wait, Done. wait, wait. Let's save here. Oh, that was a funny loading saving screen. Right. I can't remember that one. And let's go downstairs. So I've. Oh, and I've also got a key, haven't I? What have I got the key to again? The Mortuary Sanctum. Alright, so here we are now. And this is a much bigger area. And it is slightly disorienting to be standing Dumb. in a, a large area like this and not be able to really see what's going on. So that, I imagine, is why people use that mod. Oh, what's this? These metallic blue tapestries are made of thin chain All right. links. Oh, cool. Tapestries? But I can't unravel them and see what they're of. Oh, God. Let me get a sort of an idea of the lay of the land here. What have we got? So. Oh, Memorial Hall. Oh, the Memorial Hall. That's where I was heading for. Okay, so actually I'm, I'm kind of at the edge, so I will go back over here. Because, uh, you know, I want to see everything. Here's another zombie. Hello, zombie. What's up with you? What's the thing about you, then? This doddering corpse has had its eyes sewn shut as well as its mouth, and the number 732 is carved into its brow. The threadwork that keeps its ocular cavities sealed looks extremely old. You wonder if the eyes were sewn shut before or after the man's death. You notice he is carrying a huge tome in his hands, as if taking it somewhere. Uh, I will have that tome. 
You carefully take the tome from the corpse's hands. It doesn't seem to notice. Well, they don't notice stuff to these zombies. The tome appears to be a book of enchantments and wards. It is filled with diagrams and charts detailing various aspects of the necromatic arts. The book itself is extremely heavy. As awkward as the zombie is, it must be extremely strong. Wicked! Is this the start of how you become, you know, a, a sort of a wizard in this game? A zombie-raising wizard type person? A necromancer! That's the word! Isn't it weird that there's a whole word for people who do just that? A necromancer. Maybe I don't understand the definition of the word necromancer. Let's find out. But I always thought that it was people who do magic based on the dead. Wait! No! I heard something about this recently that actually necromancy means seeing the future. Mancy means seeing the future, I think. Necromancy. The supposed practice of communicating with the dead, especially in order to predict the future. See, I can still remember things. Check if there's anything else. So, sorry about taking that book from you. you got to be nice to them, why not? All right, let's have a little look at this book then. There it is, The Tome of Bone and Ash. Oh, oh dear. Those are the authors, presumably. Ashley and uh, Bonely. This worn, leather-bound tome lists diagrams and charts detailing several minor wards and enchantments. There are numerous drawings of skeletons, bones... <laughs> Just a load of pictures of skeletons going like, ooh... Ooh. There are numerous drawings of skeletons, bones, and the manner by which they may be preserved over time. Of particular interest is the section regarding guardians. Apparently the dustmen animate corpses of fallen giants. Cool. To serve as guardians for the mortuary. Cool. Well, we're obviously going to meet them then. To make them even deadlier, armouring enchantments are woven into their breastplates to help shield them from attacks. Okay, so the moral of this book is don't try and attack giants. Okay. You don't usually get a moral in textbooks, do you? This book is much too complex for you to absorb all at once, but it looks as if you could refer to certain sections when the need arises. Oh, cool! So that probably means that I'll have, you know, a puzzle in front of me and, you know, the normal dialogue box will come up. And usually it would say, I don't know, hit it with a hammer, walk away. Uh, but I'll now have a thing that says, check the Tome of Bone and Ash. I like this game. I like this game. Mort's got the cleaning rag, so I can... Give him the... What do they do again? Nothing. Right. Well, I'll give them to him anyway, and then we can just do nothing with them. Uh, right, thanks, zombie. You're a cool dude cool dude. I know what those are. You can see them better there, I feel. Is that right? I don't know, but it feels that way. Yummy. All right. Uh, sorry if I keep saying yummy. Right. It's just that there's a little... I don't know, if you've got your headphones on, you'll be able to hear it more, but there's a little voice that sometimes goes, yummy, in my ear. No, 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 no. No, both of them. I'm gone. All right. Uh, what's going on here? Steps up to what? It looks like a large tomb. The marble surface gives it a rather elegant look. Well, it probably... Oh, oh, the plaque on this beer is blank. Buyer. The plaque on this buyer is blank. Nameless one just having a little sniff of his armpit there. I'm gone. Done. Come on. This w come on, this way. I know you've got to follow a certain amount of paths, but let's be reasonable, shall we? Okay. I'm gone. This is the old gaming trick, I'm of gone. course, for any RPG. Go all the way around all of the edges. Make sure you've uncovered everything. This is, this is the zombie I already met, isn't it? It is, yes. Okay. How are we doing now with unveiling everything? Oh, not very well. Okay, so off this way we go now. Can't tell what's uh, wall and what's... Fog of war! Oh dear! Oh, a giant skeleton. I think I'll just... Save there. Save that. And then I'll go and look at the giant skeleton. Oops, I was too nervous and pressed the wrong button. That can happen, so if you notice, that can happen sometimes in fiddly, clicky games. You get nervous and you just start pressing the wrong things. Before you is a giant skeleton in ornate bronze armour. The armour has been bolted onto the skeleton's frame and a series of elaborate symbols have been carved across the breastplate. You wonder where the skeleton came from? You wonder where they made humans in this size? No, oh, well, I imagine it's not going to be a human, is it? It's going to be a giant, isn't it? I think we just heard about those, didn't we? The huge blade in its hands looks like it weighs as much as a wagon cart. Oh dear. Okay, now I don't think I'm going to attempt to steal its weapon off it. 
Or I can talk to it, or I can examine it carefully. Try and nick its blade. Try and nick its bolts. <laughs> Offer it to... Yeah, go on. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just reading that to myself there. But I've been made aware that uh, some people watch Let's Plays while they draw. Uh, which I should have been aware of, because it's what Abby does. Uh, my wife. Um, but, oh, go on. Let's have the ring on for this one, shall we? Haven't had it on today. Let's pop it on. Diddling. There it is. I tried to figure out a way to rig the ring box so that when you take the ring out, the sonic diddling noise does actually play, but I couldn't figure it out. If you know, then uh, tell me how to do it. So anyway, yes, uh, I was told by... Who was it? It was Kate. It was Kate Ashwin, who does a comic called Widdershins. Uh, it's a webcomic, so you can go and have a look at it now. Plug, you should go and have a look at Widdershins. It's, uh, it's a wizards and bounty hunters and top hats sort of a comic, set in the 1830s, I say carefully. Um, I don't want to say what era that is, because I don't know anything about history. And recently, someone incorrectly described um, another friend, Robin's comic, Curia Regis, uh, as Victorian when it isn't. So I don't want to make that mistake and start proclaiming what era different things are set in, but uh, if the idea of period webcomics sound good to you, then go and have a look at both of those. Widdishins is silly and magic, and uh, Curie Regis is actually quite serious and has extremely intricate backgrounds that I've no idea how she does. Like, she gets all the fiddly architecture and stuff right, and goodness knows how she does that. It's uh, way too much hard work. And they're both good, and you should go and look at them both. So, anyway, for the sake of Kate, hi Kate, and indeed Abby, who up until now I've been sort of sitting down and forcing to watch these videos with me, but uh, I imagine, now that that's got a little bit tired, she'll just be watching them while she draws, if indeed she watches them at all. Who knows, it's not part of the stipulations of the marriage contract, so I don't know whether she's going to watch them or not, and frankly I don't care. But for anyone who is doing something, such as washing up or drawing or tidying the house while you watch these videos, I shall read this bit out to you. So I just said to Mort, Hey Mort, how about this skeleton? Will it do as a body? And he's just grinned, and I've gone, Uh, is that a yes, or...? And Mort goes, Oh, sorry. Mort floats up to the head of the skeleton, stares at it, then floats back down, studying the armour and the blade as he descends. Oh yes, 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 I think this will do. Right, so he actually wants this body. Um, huh. Okay, so I can say, All right then, give me a second to try and pry the head off this thing. Or I can say, I don't know, this thing looks like more than you can handle. Yeah, I'm going to say that, because it actually looks like more than I can handle. Then what, in Bartle, did you ask me if I wanted it for, then? Practicing your cruelty skills? Mort bobs indignantly. And after all I've done for you... I was thinking of your safety, Mort. I'm worried attaching your head to this thing would hurt you somehow. Mort stares at you for a moment. What, did we get married at some point? What's all this, I don't want you to get hurt, Wash? Mort glares at you. If you really cared, you'd find a way to get my head onto that giant skeleton's body. All right, then. Give me a second to pry the head off this thing. Oh, this isn't going to go well. Oh. As you are about to do so, you suddenly stop and your eyes are drawn to the skeleton's armour. Oh, something about the symbols engraved on its breastplate makes you pause. Is it going to have that symbol that I noticed earlier with the teeth? If these skeletons are guardians, then disturbing them may awaken them. Yeah, I'm going to examine it. The skeleton's intricate bronze armour is riveted onto its ribcage. Oh, I've already done this. Have I? Have I already done this? And shoulder blades with a series of iron bolts. As you study- no, I haven't. As you study the frame behind the armour, you notice the same iron bolts are set into the skeleton's shoulder, elbow, pelvic and knee joints. A mass of thick leather cords and heavy knotted ropes run along the length of the skeleton's arms and legs, woven in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and tendons. Um, examine the armour. Okay. Despite the armor's obvious age, it looks well cared for. It shines brightly, and the symbols engraved on the breastplate seem to flow in the firelight, shifting slightly whenever you try to focus on them. Oh, really? Cool. Ah, oh, so it's like the uh, it's like the symbols on the inside of the One Ring, only a bit more sort of swimmy. Study the symbols, dude. Of course. Almost unconsciously. No, oh, I didn't get a blowing for that. Almost unconsciously, you let your gaze relax as you look at the symbols, and they turn out to be a magic eye. <laughs> I've got it, Mort. It's a 3D picture of a boat. Oh, this one's rubbish. It's just words saying Happy Christmas. <laughs> After a moment, the symbols cease shifting and resolve into a trail of runes that run up and down the breastplate. Strangely enough, the interlocking pattern of runes reminds you of chains. 
And with that thought, you suddenly recall that these runes are some sort of warding enchantment. Great! And now that I think I'm getting a bit of an insight into how the this system works, I suspect that the reason why there's this paragraph about this, and then it's like, no, try and recall it for real. I click I click again and I get another paragraph. That suggests to me that the reason why, you know, the stuff in this isn't on the end of this one is because not everyone will get this one this is because i've uh you know put numbers in that stat that lets me remember things more easily which makes me think that if i click this i will definitely remember something um otherwise this option wouldn't be here unless it could be one of those rolls that DD does couldn't it it could be one of those things where i click this and then it's going to roll against my stats and then find out if i get enough of a score to remember the thing let's find out you study the runes for a while, but you can't decipher the enchantment. It looks pretty complicated, and you're having a hard time concentrating. Aw, perhaps I haven't got a high enough score. After all, but what I can do is I can compare the runes to the runes in the Book of Tome... The Book of Tome and Ash? No, it isn't called the Book of Tome and Ash. It's called the Book of Bone and Ash. It's the Tome of... The Tome of Bone and Ash. Oh, dear. I wonder if this is one of the little things that the um, that the mod that I'm aware exists that fixes little things can do. Should I uh, play uh, Akuma? Should I install the mod? You know the mod I'm thinking of. The one that just fixes little bits and bobs that they that they say you should install. I, I did actually intend to install it. I just didn't get around to it. Should I do that or is it going to kill all my save games or, or what? Anyway, let's do it. You consult the tome and compare the diagrams to the markings on the breastplate. From what you can make out, the runes are a lesser armoring enchantment, but several skull-shaped runes and spherical tracings along the edges of the armor suggest that several greater necromantic and oh, necromantic and warding enchantments are woven in as well. Touching the skeleton in a necromantic way will most likely cause it to awaken and defend itself. Okay, that's nice to know, but how did we get that from this? So the runes are a lesser armoring enchantment, but then there are some greater necromantic and warding enchantments. Okay, so those are the ones that mean it's going to be kind of alive and that. Okay, yeah, consult Tome of Bone and Ash. Got it right that time. See if you can determine how they can be broken. Boing. From what you can make out from the tome, it seems the armoring enchantment applies only to the breastplate. The necromantic enchantment allows the skeleton to be raised, but it is the warding enchantment that gives the skeleton its limited awareness of its surroundings. You'd guess that if you were to mar the skeleton's wards, it would interpret it as an attack, unless you blinded it to your presence first. Okay. Okay. So. I want to blind the skeleton to my presence and then mar its wards. I don't know, do I want to do that? Like, why am I, why am I fussing with this skeleton in the first place? So I could mar the runes. <laughs> what does that mean? Mar them. Just like, what? Scribble on them. Scribble them out. Mar the runes maintaining the armoring enchantment first. No. Then the necromantic, then the warding enchantment. Or... Mar the runes maintaining the warding enchantment first, then work backward through the rune pattern, cancelling the necromantic, then the armoring enchantment, or just leave it alone. Oh, well neither of those says, don't do any marring, but first blind it to your presence, so I have to know which one of these blinds it to my presence. So, it is the warding enchantment that gives it awareness of its surroundings, so I need to get rid of the warding enchantment first. Then the necromantic, which makes it alive. Okay, so first I'm going to make it so it doesn't know anything's going on. Then I'm going to make it so it isn't even alive. Then, then I... Why do, Why though? What's the point? Why would I then mar the armoring enchantment? It's completely dead to the world then. Like, it's not... It's just a statue then. It's just a skeleton. Maybe I'm going to get its armor. That would be cool. Let's try it. Ah! The work is difficult and nerve-wracking at first, but slowly your mind begins to focus and the runes begin to unravel beneath your attack. Within minutes, the giant skeleton has been stripped of the enchantments binding it. It collapses, falling to the floor with a crash of bones and a heavy clanging noise. Uh-oh. Damned pile of bones. Hey! Oh, that's a big one. 800. You wait for a moment, but no one responds to the sound. Moving quickly, you sift through the skeleton's parts on the floor. Most of it's too heavy or too old to be useful, but you discover a piece of the skeleton's breastplate with a majority of one of the broken enchantments engraved on it. You have a feeling that it could prove useful. Okay, so I've got a bit of breastplate with the majority of one of the broken enchantments. Oh, wow. Ooh, most of a broken enchantment. Ooh, that's useful. 
most of most of a spell. Alright, well I'll have that anyway. Gained item! And there's a collapsed skeleton, I, I guess. It just looks like a... Just a scribble, really. So what have I got now? Oh, ah! I've got this Rune of Lesser Warding, but I can't use it. It's red. Let's have a little look. Oh gosh, look at all of this. It invokes armor. Okay, so it isn't armor. Oh look, you can see a little... Oh, a little symbol over it. They've really gone to town here. So it, it isn't armor, but it invokes a spell of armor, so you get armor points anyway. Teaches user armor. Oh, okay. So like if I wear that, I, I know an armor spell then. Level one wizard. Right, is that why I can't... That'll be why I can't use it then, because I'm a fighter, not a wizard. Damn it, Jim. Duration until destroyed by damage. Okay, speed one. I don't know what that would do. Area of effect, one creature. Saving throw, none. Um, I shall have to ask my D&D contacts what a saving throw is. Oh, you lot, go on, just tell me in the comments down below. What's a saving throw? Wait five, usable only by mages. Um, upon closer examination of the runes covering the surface of this breastplate, you think you might be able to unlock the rune's power and use it to invoke a primitive warding enchantment similar to the one that protected the giant skeleton. Activating the rune will destroy the breastplate, however. Oh, okay. Alright, but I can't, there's no use button, so I can't do that at the moment, because I'm not a, a wizard, I'm guessing. I suppose Mort can do it, can he? No. Alright. There we go. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll save there. Not, I'm, not, I'm gonna keep playing for a minute, but I'll save there. I'll heat my tea up though. I'll have to do that, aren't I? Without having to wait for, uh, for a video break. So, how are you enjoying the game so far? Like it? I like it. I really like it. Like, I can't wait to play it. And, and I don't just mean from day to day, I mean like now. I, I'm really looking forward to coming back over there and playing this game. Come on! Come on! Ten... Nine, come on! Eight, seven, six... I wanna play Torment, come on! Five, four, three... Come on! Oh, there we go. There we go. Lovely. Oh, by the way, if my uh, if my face looks a bit scratchy today, it's because I thought I could get away with uh, not changing my uh, razor blade uh, for another few days, and I was not correct. All right, back to it we go then. Look at these big blobby buttons. Blobby. Okay, so well here we are, still exploring this giant space that is the mortuary I'm first gone. floor. Now. A hazy, distant memory suggests to me that over here on the... L oh, look, this one's unrolled. Still can't see what it's of, though. Ah, now there's a dusty. I'll, I'll, uh, oh, a guard. Oh, even worse. Oh, another guard. Oh, even worse. Yes, now what I was about to say is that a, a hazy, distant memory suggested to me that on the left is the way out of the mortuary. And, um... You know, I've just generally gathered from the story so far that if I try and leave the mortuary, there's going to be trouble. So uh, I'll uh, steer clear of them for now until I've done that other stuff with the, uh, you know, trying to find my companions and that. Okay, so here's another one. And I'm going to try and do the same thing. Yeah, and then maybe I'll get another bit of rune. And maybe I need to collect all the bits of rune. You suspect that marring the rune pattern along the breastplate could unravel the enchantments, but it looks difficult. The pattern's complicated, and scratching out the wrong portion could cause the skeleton to animate. Okay, so... I I have just saved, so I'm going to just go ahead and try doing it the same way as before. I assume this would take us through all of the same process. So, warding enchantment, then necromantic, then our... Bonk! Hey, another 800. I feel stronger. Hey! Lovely. What's that done? Is it this? Have I got more of those now? No. No. No! Okay, so I don't know what that improved on me at all, but uh, I did see a number come out of my head, I just didn't look at what it was, so I'll look at it on the video! I feel stronger. So here's another rune of lesser warding. Can I... can I stack these? Should be able to. 
Right, I'm going to see if there's another one of them then. Because maybe this is something where I'm meant to be putting them all together. And here, finally, we get the front view of the giant skeleton. There he is, look. There he is. <laughs> Oof, dear, oh dear. Steady on, giant skeleton. Dispel the enchantments. Dispel them in the correct order. Let's see what we've got this time. Is that what he said a minute ago? Nope, he's getting used to it now. You quickly rummage through the skeleton's remains and once again uncover a piece of the skeleton's breastplate. Oh, I like this. Oh, it's acknowledging that we've done it already. Like the first, this one, and not just acknowledging it, like the game hasn't just put on a switch that's like, okay, you've done this before. Like, someone's written a different paragraph. Once again, you uncover a piece of the skeleton's breastplate. Like the first, this one also has a fragment of its broken enchantment engraved on it. It could prove useful. Looks like my skills have increased. Oh, Gone. nice. We're all leveling up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Done. What is this? The set of death trap? Oh. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I thought I was going to get a thing of information there. I didn't notice Done. I had the right. open it up like it's a all drawer right. hand icon. Go I'm gone. Hello, viewers. This is the Dave of the future who is editing the video later on, talking in a different voice to differentiate himself from the video game playing Dave of the past. Um, that's, uh, that's enough of that. Um, I just wanted to step in to assure the viewer that I share their disdain of game playing stage Dave for not right clicking on whatever cool weapon it was that I just picked up and finding out what it was, which as far as I'm aware at this point, I don't do at any time in the video. Probably next time I play the game I'm going to have to do it now. What an idiot. Alright, back to the game where Dave will shortly get his comeuppance. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh oh. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's save there in case. Uh oh. Oh no. All right. Oh no. Am I being actually actively chased? Oh no. I think I am. I think they're chasing me. Oh dear. All right. Okay. Well, I can just spin that yarn about. Uh, about wanting to go and see Thingums. Doll. Ah, there we go. Okay. I'm gonna do another mid part six save there in case uh, something is about to go wrong. And would go wrong every time. Alright, let's deal with you then. Are you lost? No, I'm not lost. I'm here to see someone. I'm here to see Dahl. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, that always sorts those guys out. This reanimated male corpse has the numbers 1041 carved into its forehead. Despite its taut, desiccated flesh, it is apparent that its features once had a rather exotic cast to them. Oh, yeah. Bit dusky, was he? <laughs> what are you, game? Someone's grandma who means well but has old fashioned views. <laughs> Come on, this is a fantasy world that you've made up. You don't have to shyly use euphemistic racial generalizations from Earth in this. What's exotic in a world where my best mates are talking skull anyway? And there's giants. This is a zombie! How was whatever the zombie looked like before it was a reanimated magical walking corpse <laughs> any more exotic than being a reanimated magical corpse? <laughs> this is a Daily Mail RPG. Um, the zombie's lips have been stitched closed, most likely to prevent it from moaning incessantly. <laughs> oh, oh is, that, is that what exotic zombies do? That is a stereotype. And it smells of strongly of formaldehyde. Denzel's turned up his stereo up, is ignoring you. So, uh, seen anything interesting going on? Nope. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop. This is a heavy barred gate of rusted steel. There doesn't appear to be any way of opening it. Well, hang on. Is it the sort of heavy barred gate that I've got a key to? I think it's trying to tell me that it isn't. Okay, no. What's the point of putting it there, then? Yes, I know. I'm, I'm going. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going, I'm going. Right, where are we? Oh, ah! Ah, the only bit left is the northwest room, which is where that lady is! So let's make that a cliffhanger, then. Let's stop it there. And uh, next time, 
you know, we'll go and look at that then, shall we? Uh, so... Start part seven. Here! Right, there we go! Another bit of torment done. Goodbye! diddly doo 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 I haven't got- I haven't got a theme tune. Bye. Oh, you bought it to help with your homework.